before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you click on the bell notification so that you get notified of all of our upcoming videos. All right, so I have, um, uh, welcome to Real Estate Life 360. Uh, we were supposed to have a, a live session, but because of technical issues, um, you know, we have Shomel Malik here on, on, um, on here, but I know he's a, he, he's a very busy guy and I appreciate you taking the time to try to get on. I know we have some technical difficulties here, but um, no problem. Uh, hopefully everybody, uh, this will be smooth sailing after this. Um, so I, just a little background about yourself. I know um, I've heard your story before. Um, just kind of give me a, you know, a couple of, you know, like a one minute or two minute brief synopsis of your personal journey, I guess, you know, from, you know, what, uh, from, you know, after you graduated and how you got to where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, my background, uh, I happen to be Pakistani. And so one of the things that uh, is instilled early on is you're either going to be a doctor, engineer, or there's no, none of the above. Right, like your third option, you're gonna be a failure. So, you know, when we got to America, like everything was focused in on me becoming a doctor, my brother becoming an engineer. Right. That's it. Nothing else mattered to my parents. So, you know, that that was our upbringing. Um, I wouldn't say I necessarily worked hard in school. School kind of came easy. Uh, graduated top ten percent of my class and all of that. Went to Rutgers and I was pre medicine doing cell biology and neuroscience picked up economics as like a backup dual major and um, third year of college. I actually had my own company. Uh, I had a distributorship for dial up internet service back in the days when it was dial up. Oh, that nice. Me Interesting. Up to the world of business uh -huh. uh, and, you know, reading books like rich dad, poor dad and uh, all the Kiyosaki greats uh, as well as Dale Carnegie and John Maxwell and so on. And it just kind of put me in a different frame of mind where I went to my dad. Um, I had just purchased my MCAT book. I was getting ready for the uh, medical college admissions test, uh, the MCATs. I uh, never cracked it open. And I asked him, like, look, I, I don't think I want to do medicine. I, I'm going to have to figure out what else I want to do. But I do not want to do four years more of education and then three years of residency. And then, you know, all the uh, debt that comes with that and then working many years to pay that off while starting a life and family. And so um, a friend of mine uh, that was, you know, three or four years older had worked in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, kind of talked me to go into that, uh, into, the, into the healthcare industry. So I started in sales and then graduated up to training and management um, and then eventually shifted over to medical uh, devices and supplies and, uh, and continued to climb the corporate ladder uh, right. Until I was a global business uh, manager for a, uh, it was a small surgical supplies unit within a much larger um, healthcare company. Mm -hmm. So I was going to $35 million P&L. Uh, so I did the corporate life, you know, for 11 and a half years. Okay. Uh, while building my real estate business as a side hustle, and I wouldn't even call it a side hustle, like I treated it like a full-time or more than full-time endeavor. Uh, right from 2008, 2009 is when I got into the business. Uh, so I've never seen the market crash. Uh, I was fortunate with timing that uh, I was the beneficiary of the crash because in those times, uh, you know, banks were selling properties 20 to 60 cents on the dollar. My brother had already jumped in, uh, both hands, both feet into real estate investing. He had done some monster six-figure deals at the right. time. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at him. You know, he's 23 years old. He had just closed a $130,000 flip. And I'm looking at him like, wow, I, I have to work the entire year. to, And I won't even make that much. Right, right. I right. on in my career. Um, and, uh, and so I, I started looking into it seriously. I uh, learned a lot from him early on. We had separate businesses. Uh, for the first nine years of uh, my company's existence. And then in November of 2016, uh, which was, you know, we just celebrated our three-year anniversary, uh, we uh, combined 
forces in 2016 uh, to make Apex Capital Group. So uh, we started off uh, you know, doing a lot of wholesales. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, then, you know, in short sales, that evolved into doing rehab fix and flips, uh, which then further evolved into doing uh, multifamily new construction development um, and, and just new construction overall in single family homes, residential. Okay. okay. And, uh, and so we set up our business where we had a wholesaling division or department, uh, rehab fix and flips, and then rental buy and hold. So like a, a three-legged stool. Right, right. We call it in our company. Um, and then we were also doing education, uh, you know, obviously with Glenn. Uh, we partnered up with him to do a lot of boot camps and workshops to treat, you know, teach this to other people and pay it forward. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that that was a, uh, a nonprofit organization. You know, we did charge money for those courses. But the main thing that we wanted out of that was to create uh, competent investors that we could then turn around and partner with and joint venture with because you can't cover everything all by yourself. Right, but right. The, you know, the main reason for having a tribe and students and so on is so that you can do deals with them. And that's really where the money's made. Um, and so, you know, we've been doing that, uh, you know, for quite a number of years. Um, yeah. And it's been beneficial uh, for both sides. Both right, right teacher and the students and I learned from them, you know, um, and that, that's kind of a, you know, our business in a nutshell. Uh, today, the way that our company looks is we have uh, about 10 uh, employees in-house. Right, and, right. Um, and then, you know, uh, externally, we will probably indirectly uh, hire about 60 to 70, uh, you know, uh, people with skilled labor and so on and so forth on the construction side of our business. And most of what we do is uh, buy and sell turnkey rental properties. Uh, so if we have the capital on hand, we will buy that property and hold on to it. Okay. Um, and, th and that's, you know, that's wealth creation where flipping is just really revenue creation, but you're as good as your last flip. That doesn't last forever. And then the tax consequences on that is pretty hefty. And so our name of the game is to really build up the rental portfolio as much as possible. And we do that by pretty much either raising private capital um, or all of the flips that we do in our turnkey real estate business, we use that capital to buy properties. Uh, most of the work that we do is in Mercer and Burlington County of New Jersey. And uh, we're also extremely active and we have another office in Toledo, Ohio where we've uh, done over 115 deals. So okay. all in all, Paul, um, done over 600 real estate transactions. In our wow. Career, um, and raised over $50 million in private equity uh, to be able to do some of that. And um, yeah, we've been, you know, it's, it's been a great uh, journey so far. We continue to learn and you know, there's people that have come into the business after us. Mm -hmm. And I, when I see somebody and, that's doing something that works for them. Uh, one of our main philosophies is that we never ever stop learning and there is no uh, hierarchy in this business. You see some people that come out like gangbusters and they actually go ahead of you. Right, right, and yeah. You can always learn from somebody. Uh, no, and definitely. What they're doing is that you bring it into your business and it just becomes an arrow in your quiver uh, to be able to use those strategies and tactics in your own uh, line of business if it fits. Yeah. Uh, your business model. So, um, so that's how we operate. You know, we're we're based in Central Jersey in South Brunswick. That's where our main office is. Okay, cool. We're in Toledo, Ohio. Man, you you just answered so many questions that I was going to ask. <laughs> All right. So uh, <laughs> no. I'll see you on the next podcast. <laughs> no. What uh, the main reason I wanted to get you on was because I know you have a team. I know you have you work with a lot of you know outside team members, and so I wanted to kind of drill down and, 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 and kind of, you know, get the details, the, the nitty gritty about, you know, the, some of the struggles of, um, you know, did you at one point, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you built that, you, you started as a one man shop or two man shop in, you know, uh, yeah. when you joined forces with your brother. Okay. Now at what point did you say, okay, you realize, okay, I need to hire more people. I need to hire somebody. And who would that person be? Yeah. I, you know? I'll tell you exactly what that, uh, 
look like sequentially. So uh, it was, you know, the first four years, probably 2008 to about 2012, was just me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. And that, and then I hired an admin assistant who would take on a lot of the, uh, you know, the admin work, the paperwork, and so on, which freed me up to go and find more deals. Okay. We added a third person, and that was kind of the core team uh, early on in those, uh, you know, beginning years. And it stayed that way for some time. And then we added like a fifth and a sixth and seventh member for acquisitions and uh, liquidation and, and built out these departments. I don't call them department. Department is usually a bunch of people, but they, they were, you know, we created lanes for each person. Right. You know, when I joined forces with my brother in November 2016, total, all in all, we were 23. 23 people. A lot of overhead, a lot of W-2s, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of payroll to make. Right. Um, and we had this, uh, our, our bread and butter was this turnkey real estate where we would find properties, essentially wholesale it to a uh, high net worth individual. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the difference was instead of just wholesaling and that's it, we would stay on and our in-house construction company would do the renovations for them because these were people that are not familiar with real estate, but they wanted to partake in real estate investments. Right. And so they knew nothing about construction, leasing, property management, any of that. And so we built uh, essentially a, uh, you know, a one-stop shop where we would source the property, we would renovate it for them, we would lease it up, and then we would do the property management. And, you know, and then you got to start to see, uh, and, and putting people in places uh, where they would manage these different functions within the conveyor belt of our business model. Right. Uh, right. And what we found was that, look, we were making a, a ton of revenue, uh, mm -hmm. but were we as profitable? We were probably as profitable. So we were working a lot harder mm -hmm. with a lot more employees to make about the same amount of money. And we're like, this is completely, you know, asinine. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and little by little, we started to trim the fat because, you know, you have uh, X number of employees. You're going to have your high performers. You're going to have your mediocre performers. Uh -huh. And certainly going to have some low performers, irrespective of how you interview, irrespective of how you, uh, you know, hire your hiring process. Uh, everybody looks good on paper, but. It's when the rubber yep. meets the road and really start, you know, getting down to it. You see that certain people have the DNA and makeup of what's called an intrapreneur, which mm -hmm. are people that have entrepreneurial mindset and spirit, but they work within a company's infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And some people are just purely employees. Right. And um, you do need both. Right. And you need some people mm -hmm. to just take instructions, mm -hmm. offer feedback, right, and and, uh, and initiative and be self-starters. But you need some people that are going to, like, literally take things by the reins. Yeah. And from point A to point Z, get it to the finish line, the way that the owner of the company is going to do. Right. right. Come under high water, this thing's getting done. And right. So you need some of those people. And those are the people that you start looking amongst the, amongst the pack. And you start to bring them up into your leadership team. And so, you know, we evolved into being big. And then we took like a accordion approach and brought it back down to small. And where we're at today, uh, you know, with the, with the nine or 10 employees that we have, I think is, is a sweet spot for us. Right. Where mm -hmm. before we had a hierarchy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, we had managers managing people that were below them. Mm -hmm. What we like to do today, instead of going vertical that way, we actually go horizontal. So okay. the entire team essentially reports to us. In the morning, we have a daily huddle. We mm -hmm. use Zoom. This is why I was saying that, you know, I'm familiar with Zoom. Let's get on Zoom because every single morning we use Zoom. And, and every single team member gets a chance to speak on, hey, this is what I'm doing today. Here's what I need from XYZ. If you guys can get that for me, all of that is then captured on a spreadsheet. Who needs what from who? So we've got a matrix on that mm -hmm. and then run our days based off of that matrix of, look, I've got my to-do list, things that I'm going to do. 
I've got certain things that I've delegated. I'm waiting to get responses on. And, uh, and then, they've, then I've got things that are of lower priority that will get done later, right? But it all goes onto that spreadsheet. And then we use a software called Trello, which, Trello. Okay. which even the free version gives you so much capabilities. Um, and Trello, what it allows us to do is we create uh, cards for every single property or every single subject. Mm -hmm. And you just continue to move it to the right until it gets done. Right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so Trello allows me to see the entire universe of our business um, uh, from a stand uh, property uh, project management standpoint. Okay. And see all the things that are going on. And then we have our employees that are actually moving things along the way to make sure that uh, everything gets done. A deal comes in, it goes into our acquisitions board. You know, if it gets negotiated or if it gets killed, you know, it gets categorized accordingly uh, and marked accordingly. And uh, everybody knows, you know, where they stand. And, uh, and so there's that, there's that, uh, that notion of independence mm -hmm. in our company that you are solely responsible for your stuff, right? right? But there are areas of overlap where you necessarily have to communicate and work with your team members. So you have the idea of interdependence. And so as much as we preach independence and, you know, figure it out mentality, and get it done attitude in our company, uh, there is that, uh, notion that we also depend on our other teammates and no person is going to be left behind. And so today, that's what we're at. We're, at, we're about nine, 10 employees for the operation that we run. We're very comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. and when we do add people, first we try to see is can we take the existing assets that we have and graduate them to that position? Um, and then we look on the outside. Uh, gotcha. And, gotcha. And, and so, so a quick so quick question um you know when you said about the 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 the, the, the each morning or you get together now that's you're talking about high level people those are those are people that you basically um, no we get together with uh, no all 10 employees uh are on the call my brother and I we initiate the call we start the call at 8:14 a.m. every morning okay. not 8:15 but 8:14 because we want to see and test everyone's punctuality and accountability. And so mm -hmm. for that reason, we start the call at 8.14 a.m. every single morning. Right. And so now it's kind of ingrained into everybody that 8.14, I got to be on that call, right? And it, 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 that's why it's such a weird number. Um, <laughs> and then uh, when we get on that call, and then we have a sequence of, you know, who goes first, who goes second, and everybody kind of lays out what they're doing for the day. Um, and then we have other meetings as well. We have a scoreboard meeting that we do with our transactions coordinator that shows us what's in the pipeline, what's closing, how much revenues are going to be realized this week, and so on. We have a separate meeting for construction where we're going through all of our rehab projects and so mm -hmm. on. Gotcha. And then we have a separate meeting for all of the out-of-state projects that we have. So, and, and these are, you know, they, they have standing uh, weekly times. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to be on those calls and they kind of work their days around that. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that's very useful. I mean, that's, uh, that's awesome. So is and Trello. I said one little thing on that is that we don't necessarily run those meetings. A lot of times we are fly on the wall, myself and my brother, and we allow and empower the employees that, you know, are really responsible for that. So like our director of construction runs a construction meeting. And we jump in when we have a question, but we give the power, we empower him to run it and show us that he's really in charge and that he is, you know, he's got everything under control. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Another, uh, meeting that we do. Oh, that's, that's awesome because that's actually, I mean, that's one of the things that I'm learning right now is, is really, you know, cause if, if you have, if you're doing the work for everybody, that's just too much on your shoulder, you know? Yeah. It's like, why, why hire in the first place, then it's like exactly. I need a warm a seat so I can cut you a check, right? So, yeah. <laughs> right. So, so hey, by the way, while we're on that message, you know, especially for like admin positions and things uh -huh. like that, like yeah. you provide a task. One of the things is that you know, if, if you finish a task, don't just sit there because you're on the clock and I'm paying for it, right? I want to mm -hmm. be able to squeeze as much out of that person as possible, and I want them to, you know, kind of live up to their potential as well, and so. 
we always give people default tasks that if you're not, if you're working on something that was high priority, high urgency, and you got that done, that doesn't mean you just sit there waiting for the next thing to come to you. A, either proactively look for what else needs to be done because it's never ending. There's always something to do. Or B, you do have default tasks that you can go to and start working on those things, right? So, right. Um, so, so th- th- that's extremely important, especially for uh, your admin personnel. No, I, I, and I think that, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's hard to find people with that, that DNA, you know? I, I really, I, I think that, it, you know, it, it takes, you know, it's a special kind of individual that, that, that can do that, you know, and to find that. And there's two ways to it. That, like either you find that, uh, you know, that gem, mm-hmm. uh, so either you have to pay for it, you might have to pay double or triple for somebody mm-hmm. like that because they're like, you're an executive assistant that has kind of been there, done that sort of a thing. And now they want right. to do it with a smaller company mm-hmm. or a mid-sized company. Um, or you find somebody that has the hunger and the passion gotcha, and yep. you train them up to it. Yep. Ah, good, 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 uh, good nuggets. Okay. Um, so tell me um, a, a, a lesson or story, you know, good, bad, funny that you can uh, think about in terms of growing a team. Do you have any, anything that, uh, that you want to convey to our community? Uh, I, could, I could write a book on it. I mean, <laughs> we've got, you know, when we hire folks, especially like on the acquisition side, uh-huh. uh, we teach them a lot of the trade secrets. Okay. And uh, we've, we've had people that we've hired and then they started wholesaling properties like on their own, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> on our time, uh, off to the side. Uh, thinking that we're never going to find out about it, you know, and, and, uh, I remember one guy, one young guy that we had hired, uh, uh-huh. was like literally downloaded everything off of our server, uh, which you can track, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so that, you know, when we were parting, um, we, uh, some of the recent deals that were going to be closing, we said, hey, listen, although we're parting ways, we're going to pay you out on these. At that time, we didn't know that he was stealing our information and doing deals on the side. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then we got the laptop. We're like, wait a minute! Like he downloaded everything into his personal email, and like my brother found all that out. He said uh, he called him back to the office. He said, look, I need to speak with you. Really important. You know, I know you just had your exit interview. Brought him back, and he said, there is no way in hell that we're going to pay you on this. You've been literally stealing from us right. everything that we've taught you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, sent him home. And uh, that was that. I mean, you know, employees, you know, they say kids say the darndest things. Employees do the darndest things sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with that, that aside, you will find your gems if you go through the people, uh, the ones that make it to their one year anniversary. And you can see, like, look, this person has it. They have that uh, it factor. You'll know. Yeah, and you'll I think know that, within a couple of weeks. Yep, I you give them tasks, give them the responsibilities, and you see how they own up to it and uh, are accountable for it. And mm-hmm. if they do it the way that you would do things, they are, or better. Those are the ones that you want to surround and build a team around. Yeah, that's true. That's good. Um, so besides um, Trello, what other tools do you guys use to, you know, for project management, for CRM, or for communications? Yeah, so uh, some of the main tools that we have, WhatsApp is what we use for everything communication. So, you know, we have different chats set up with different members of the team. Mm -hmm. And some of those members are on multiple chats. So the construction team has its own chat. The leasing team has its own chat. The acquisitions team has its own chat. We have a different chat, believe it or not, just for bank runs. Because my brother and I are the only ones that are on the, um, you know, on all the bank accounts. Right, right. So. So the girls at the office will prepare the withdrawal and the deposit slips and things like that when we have right, to get right. like a certified check. And, uh, and then we have a, a thing just for bank runs where we just, you know, take pictures and put all the, uh, the d- deposit receipt slips on. And, and then, of course, Google Drive on the back end to uh, store right. all of that information. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, the way that we have our Trello set up, the Trello mimics our SOPs. So how we do our acquisitions, 
whether we're doing direct mail or banded signs or whatever it is, uh, you know, ringless voicemail, uh, how that lead came in, how it went through, you know, the seller has been contacted, offers in negotiation. So we've kind of um, customized and modified Trello based on our business processes mm -hmm. and everything has a checklist in it. And that checklist has someone's initials next to it. So they're the ones that have to check that off within Trello. Okay. That way there's no like looking left or right, like who is responsible to do this. We know exactly who is responsible and who to hold accountable. Okay. So basically, uh, um, Trello, WhatsApp, Trello, Google drive. And we used to use Zoho CRM. Mm -hmm. uh, we're right now looking at, uh, bringing a, a, a CRM system that's a little bit more robust, possibly pipe drive, uh, which is more real estate um, friendly or Podio. Right. No, I mean, I, I, I tried Podio, but um, I, I just didn't like it. It's just, um, I just felt like what it did just, you like about it? What, it was just, like what did you like? um, it, it, it just was kind of slow. I guess it might've changed from when I checked it out a couple of years ago, but, um, I just, yeah. devi I just, um, you know, I, I heard pipe drive is pretty good. Um, uh, but that's more for uh, lead generation, you know, but in terms of project management, I think, you know, maybe I think Trello is good. Um, I, I use a combination of two. I use, um, it's another platform that's very similar to Trello is Aura. Uh, and then I use another, um, uh, another program called uh, free camp, which is kind of like teamworks for my project management. Um, so uh, Podio can be good, but it just, you know, I, I thought it was just too, too laggy, um, too cumbersome um, for, for what I wanted, but you know, it, whatever works, I think it's, it's the best platform, you know, whatever, whatever you use to get yourself organized. So what are you guys using now? Right now, I use um, this uh, program um, called. If you're gonna look into something, I would definitely look into Teamwork. Um, teamwork. Another pro, yeah, Teamwork is is a good platform. I just went with Free Camp because it's a little cheaper, but it does the same thing. So you could check out both. I'll send you the link to them, and you could check it out. And then, yeah. and then for. Um, for uh, like I, I have another for my I have a marketing business and I use uh, Trello uh, it's another platform that's very similar to Trello I use it's called Aura and the reason I like that is because I use a lot of overseas um, VAs and yeah. it actually keeps track of their time so that you could you could press a time a trigger and it actually keeps track of exact you know when they start the work and when they stop the work okay Okay, and cool. So that's what I use. Um, and it's a combination of two. I haven't really, um, I don't, right now I'm looking into various CRMs, but I haven't decided on one yet. And when I say okay. CRM, that's more for like lead generation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, right lead now, generation and then also follow up and nurture. And, yeah. And so I haven't, I haven't decided on what to use for that. So, okay. um, and I'm, 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 I'm staying away from Zoho. It's just because um, I just feel like it's just too much integration. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, and I think it, I'm going to end up spending more time trying to figure out how to use it. So yeah. I, I want to try to keep it as simple as possible. That's ultimately what I want to do. Right. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. But um, I want to go into the social aspect of our call. Um, so I'm going to ask for, I'm going to go into two sessions. And usually the, the, the first session is the top three. And I call it the top three. And so if anybody that's looking to, you know, um, uh, scale the business or build the business, what is the top three advice that you would give to somebody, you know, whether it's a real, you know, it could be an investor or uh, anybody in a business entrepreneur, what top three advice would you give? Top three advice. Uh, number one, uh, you are in the business of marketing, right? So as much as we are real estate investors, what we are looking for is motivated sellers, motivated buyers and motivated investors. Mm -hmm. And the only way to really grow is number one, grow your network and really get yourself out there. If you haven't been attending uh, RIA meetings and meetups, uh, Glenn Gallucci obviously has a really good one that's been going on for the longest time. And, and there's so many, we have one as well, uh, New Jersey Real Estate Alliance uh, down in uh, Central Jersey. Get out there and start uh, mixing it up with folks mm -hmm. and really start, you know, expanding your footprint um, and, and number two is deal flow. Uh, so you gotta, like I said, you're in a marketing business 
and uh, deals are king. If you have the right deal, the the cash will find its way to that deal. So, gotcha. So, uh, you know, uh, getting your lead generation going um, and take a multi-channel approach in doing that. Don't just send out letters to absentee owners and, and that's it. Like, you know, because everybody's doing that. Okay. Make more and more revenue. Uh, start to hire people and fire yourself from positions that are, you know, uh, can be done by somebody else. That you can teach it, delegate it, and let them and let them run with it. Awesome. And it's kind of like, you know, like I'm in the car right now. You're never going to let go of your business completely. Even if you go cruise control, you still have to have your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And steer a little bit here and there. But your employees and your business processes and protocols. Uh, All so right. That's number two. And then number three is it's a cycle. So the money that you do make, take some of that and pump it back into marketing and continue to grow your uh, marketing footprint. Okay. Um, and, and that's really the three main things that I would suggest. Uh, All right, cool. I, if I can add a fourth, then probably the number first thing, uh, <laughs> it would be number one, is um, grow yourself. Uh, so invest heavily in yourself mm-hmm. and in your education in this business. What's great is today you have YouTube University, right? Literally, you can sit with YouTube videos and learn everything you can right. about this business and how to scale it and grow it. And there is no shortage of speakers and real estate investors, biggerpockets.com, all of these resources that are available to you. Whereas before, 10 years ago, the only way to access that was to pay $25,000, $30,000 to <laughs> guru and join a program. Now, exactly. information, you have no reason not to succeed today. Exactly, exactly. All right. And then the last part um, is uh, let's get social. That's what I call it. And so I'm going to I'm going to ask you some questions and just pop off what whatever, you know, pops into your head. All right. Okay. So uh, Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn top favorite. All three. <laughs> All three. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't like Instagram. Uh, you know, like lately I've just been posting Kobe. Uh, right, right, or- right. And, and things like that because I, I quite honestly I am like impressed about this whole Kobe Bryant thing. Um, I know, I know. And, uh, but yeah, I've raised close, you know, uh, several million dollars on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, same with Facebook. Right, right. So wherever people congregate and they congregate on all three of those platforms, right? You should be on all three as well. Exactly. Exactly. All right. And if, there, if there's a fifth one that comes along, you know, if there's a fourth or fifth one that comes along, then get on that as well. It'd be, you know, it's you. Big, you gotta be all over the place. Yeah, you gotta be all place. over. Yes. Uh, favorite TV or Netflix series? Uh, Patriot Act, Netflix, and uh, with Hasan Minhaj. And uh, favorite TV series? Uh, it's gotta be Billions. Billions. Okay, good one. Favorite movie? Boiler room. Boiler room. Nice, nice. Coffee, tea, or water? Uh, coffee, definitely. Black coffee. <laughs> no milk, no sugar. Okay. Uh, iPhone or Android? Android, all day long. Android? Oh oh, I used to have both. I had both at the same time. Uh-huh. Uh, I was in corporate America. Android, hands down. All right, all right. I'm an iPhone guy, so I'm, <laughs> I'm a okay, little biased. <laughs> um, <laughs> favorite ice cream flavor? Um, favorite ice cream flavor, anything with some. Hello? I think I lost you for a second. Favorite ice cream flavor. Uh, anything with chocolate and peanut butter. Chocolate and peanut butter. Okay. Um, what is the, what is a bucket list that you have? What is uh, bucket list. Um, so I want to write, uh, I've written three books that okay. I co-authored that went on um, the Amazon bestsellers list. Right. Uh, I would love to um, be a, you know, um, an author of a book that I write solely by myself and it makes it to the New York Times bestsellers list. Awesome. Uh, that's one. Uh, number two, uh, there's different parts of the world that my wife and I would love to travel to. Gotcha. Uh, you know, as our kids... Now we're getting to that age. We want to start hitting up some of those destinations. Yeah. Uh, 
Number three, I want to uh, I want to open up an orphanage in my home country, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a you know very soft spot for uh, kids that I haven't had the same opportunities or privileges as I've had in my life, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you know that sort of work really uh, fuels me. Awesome. Um, we already do a lot of that sort of work in the community now. But I want to do it at a much uh, more focused and concentrated level. Um, and uh, yeah, I think those would be my top three. Cool, cool. And then uh, last question is, if you were an animal, what would you be? Lion. <laughs> a lion. <laughs> a lion. All right, awesome. All right, so, I just, I, so the reason I go through this uh, Let's Get Social is because, you know, at the end of the day, we meet, you know, at, at events and we don't really, you know, um, maybe get to know each other as well. And so I thought it would be nice to get to know you more socially in that aspect so uh anyway yeah, I, I to, i'd either a lion or an ant and just minds his business puts his head down <laughs> gets to work and is a worker right and yeah. moves with a mission right so either a lion or an ant they're like two ends of the spectrum as far as body size but yeah. <laughs> awesome uh, I really want to thank you again for I know I know you're a busy guy uh, taking time out of your busy schedule and no, getting on. Thanks for having me.